Okay, right here is a 1994 Manisman DMAG H185S. The H185S series was first introduced by DMAG in 1990 as a replacement for the older H185 model, which had been in production since 1983. Now, let's go and take a closer look at this big machine. Available from DMAG in either front shovel or backhoe configurations, depending on what the customer preferred, the H185S was designed to swing an 18 and a half cubic yard bull clam in front shovel configuration. Two different backhoe configurations were offered for this machine. A long backhoe, which allowed the H185S to swing a 10.8 cubic yard rock bucket, or a short backhoe configuration, which allowed this machine to swing a 17 cubic yard rock bucket, which you can see right here on this unit. On the back of the stick, you can see the single hydraulic cylinder to curl and uncurl the bucket. And on the top of the boom are two stick cylinders to push and retract the stick. From here you can see where the two axial piston travel motors are located. One on each crawler frame and this is what will propel each individual track. And here you can see where the two boom cylinders pin to the superstructure on the machine. Thirty-two inch or forty inch crawler shoes were available for the H185S depending on what the customer preferred and also depending on the type of ground surface that this machine would be working in. This particular unit is equipped with the wider 40 inch crawler shoes. This machine has a top travel speed of 1.4 miles per hour. And to help give you an idea of the size of an H185S. This excavator measures 25 feet 9 inches tall from the ground to the top of the operator's cab and 20 feet 6 inches wide. Now let's go up on this D-Mag. Right in here, you can see the power plant on this machine. Four different diesel engine configurations were offered by DMAG to power the H185S, depending on what the customer preferred. These included a Detroit 12V 149T, two-stroke V12 diesel engine producing 1126 horsepower, a Caterpillar 3508 DITA, four-stroke V8 diesel engine producing 1,000 horsepower, and either 
a Cummins KTA38C double turbocharged V12 diesel engine producing 1,000 horsepower, or a Cummins KTTA38C. This is a quadruple turbocharged and after-cooled V12 diesel engine, which you can see right here inside of this unit. And this engine produces 1,125 horsepower at 1,800 RPM for this machine. And for customers who preferred an electric hydraulic machine, DMAG offered the H185S with optional electric power, powered by an 850 kilowatt 6600 volt squirrel cage type induction motor. Behind the firewall are the three main hydraulic pumps, which you can see right here. These draw oil from the unpressurized hydraulic oil reservoir tank. Each pump has an output of 211 GPM and operates under a max working pressure of 4410 PSI. And here you can see the accumulator and solenoids for the swing and travel brakes. And from back here you can get another good view of the big Cummins diesel engine. Here you can get a good view of the hydraulic system and control valves. This machine features DMAG's HydroPilot 3-circuit open hydraulic system, featuring a load-limiting governor, pressure cutoff control summation capabilities, as well as selected delivery of oil flow to the slewing gear. The HydroPilot system also prioritizes hydraulic flow, which thus results in smooth hydraulic response. Inside of this compartment, located directly below the operator's cab, is the electronic room. Let's check it out. Inside of this box that you see mounted on the wall here are where all of the computers, relays, and electronics are located to work this machine. Here, you can see the single high torque axial piston swing motor, which will swing the house left or right when this machine is in operation. Here you can see the two grease barrels for the central lubrication system, one for the slewing gear and one for the attachment. And here you can see the two swing out vertical hydraulic oil coolers, which feature temperature regulated hydraulically driven fans. Mounted directly behind the operator's cab is the diesel fuel tank, which you can see right here. This holds 977 gallons of diesel fuel. And here you can see the cap to fill the tank with fuel. On the top of the engine house, here you can see the two mufflers and tailpipes. And here you can see the two air intake and air cleaning units for the engine. These particular units were installed later in the machine's life to provide for a cleaner and more superior airflow to the engine. The original OEM DMAG air cleaners were mounted on the left side of the engine house. And here you can see the homemade 
cover over a generator, which is used to power the aftermarket halogen lights on this machine for when it's working at night. And here you can see the diesel fuel tank for the generator set. All of the red canisters that you see are for the fire suppression system. And from here you can get a good view of the top deck on an H185S. Now, let's go inside and check out the operator's cab. From here you can get a good overview inside the operator's cab of the H185S. This is an air suspension seat which can be adjusted to fit the operator's weight and position. Now let's take a look at what some of these controls do. Okay. These two foot pedals that you see to the left of the operator's seat would control the bull clamp functions if this machine were set up as a front shovel. The right pedal would close the clam, and the left pedal will open the clam. The third pedal that you see over here to the right controls the swing brake. The two pilot control joysticks that you see off to the right and left sides of the operator seat control all the digging functions of the backhoe attachment in the front, or if this machine were set up as a front shovel. And this third joystick that you see over here to the left on the control console is probably the most unique feature on this machine and the one design feature that these big DMAG excavators were probably most remembered for. This is how you control all the steering and maneuvering functions on this machine. Push forward to make the excavator tram forward, pull back for reverse, and by turning to the left or right will turn the excavator in that direction. Here you can see all of the gauges and the warning lights to monitor this entire machine when it's in operation and to alert the operator in case of a malfunction. Also on the control console, you can see switches for the main engine start, the stop switch. Here you can see switches to control the front windshield wipers, the headlights, and this switch down here is a rather unique one. This switch will disengage the clam foot pedals so that they can be used instead to tram the machine forward and to turn left and right for straight long travels. And back here you can see the throttle switch to rev the engine up or idle it down. And from right here you can get a crystal clear view of what the operator would see if he were running an H185S backhoe. Directly behind the operator seat, here you can see a storage compartment, and you can see a lubrication chart. If you look down here, you can see the emergency access ladder bolted to the side of this machine, which provides a secondary means of escape for the operator to get off this machine in case of an emergency. the machine's counterweight, you can see where it says DMAG.
and the overall operating weight of an H185S can range anywhere from 240.3 to 246 tons. In November of 1995, Komatsu Limited created a joint venture with Manisman DMAG, forming the new company DMAG Komatsu, and the following year in 1996, the H185S was replaced with the newly designed H255S model, which featured many design improvements over the older unit, such as a larger counterweight for higher stability, a redesigned operator's cab, and a redesigned front shovel attachment. By early 1999, Komatsu had taken full control of DMAG and re-registered the company as Komatsu Mining Germany. That same year, the former DMAG H255S was renumbered and renamed the Komatsu PC3000. But there she is. A 1994 Management DMAG H185S.